Hello again everybody and welcome back to the third video in this five part video series where we're eventually going to build up to a car counting program in um, OpenCV and Visual Basic. And in this video we're going to uh, take a look at a prediction algorithm and we're going to test that by predicting uh, mouse movement. So uh, to get started today let's go ahead and go to GIT, HUB, MIC, RO, microcontrollers and more and then take out the spaces and there we are and then we're going to go to here and then here and then repositories and then give that just a moment to load and then if we go to OpenCV3 mouse move prediction visual basic that's what we're looking for and there's only two files in here the readme which basically just refers to the video and then frm main so let's go ahead and fire up visual studio and then we're going to go to uh, raw here and we're going to copy and paste out of this as we go through things today so uh, we'll start with the project name here so if we go to uh, file new and project and give it just a second to load here okay so if we go to visual basic windows forms application and we'll call that mouse move prediction uh, vb you can call it really whatever name you like it's not critical and then choose your preferred location uncheck those and choose okay and then the next step that we're going to do is and this is covered in the uh, installation tutorial uh, i'm going to link to uh, that in the description below as well as the first two videos in this series and those uh, the installation tutorial and the first two videos in the series are prerequisites for this video uh, please see those if you've not already but continuing on today we'll go ahead and uh, rename our form frm main and it's going to ask us, would you like to update all references? Yes, of course we would. And we'll go ahead and start it. And there's one reference that doesn't ever seem to get updated. So we're going to go here. And then we're going to manually update this to FRM main and save and close. And now the program should run successfully. So we can close out of that and close out of that and go ahead and run it. And there we go. And next we're going to set up our references. So if we go up here to any CPU configuration manager, let's go ahead and change that to new and then x64 any CPU create solution platforms and that's now x64. So now we can go to uh, project add reference and then we can go to browse and then we're going to choose those four DLLs and then add and then OK and then we're going to go to project add existing item and then we're going to paste in this location from the cheat sheet and then we're going to change to all files viewable and choose those four DLLs and choose add and the next step that we're going to do is we're going to start copy and pasting our code in from the github repository I had the screen um, up just a moment ago it's actually on the other other screen on my two monitors at the moment let's go ahead and drag that over here so we're just going to be copying and pasting out of here and there we go and so we'll start by copying and pasting at the top and then we have to add these components here so we have a table layout panel so let's see here and I think I'm actually going to fast forward through this at this point because it's essentially the same steps as in the previous two videos Okay, so there we are. Our form is complete. This is actually even more simple of a form than the previous video because we don't have a file to open, so we don't have the button at the top to open the file or the file log uh, or the file dialog box at the bottom. And we're going to make uh, the image box and the text box take up an equal amount of the form because we're going to move the mouse around over the image box and then uh, print some data in the text box. So let's go ahead and get to that now in code. So we're just simply going to copy and paste in all the code that isn't there already. Actually we do need to add the mouse move event for the image box. So if we click on the image box then properties and go to the lightning bolt and then we're going to go to mouse move and that is right here and double click on that and I believe that's the only event yes it is okay so now we can copy and paste in our member variables and uh, there's that and whoops okay and I pasted that on totally the wrong line which is why I'm getting all these red underlines here okay so let's do that there we go and there we go that's much better and recenter that and then we're going to copy and paste in this one comment line and then we're going to add the contents of mouse move which is going to be this here 
So that's going to go right there. And then we're going to add predict next position and draw a cross. And those are going to go right there. Draw a cross and predict next position, which is the longest function in the program by far, but it's really not very complicated. Okay, so now I think we're ready to go ahead and run it. And what's going on in this program, and I believe what I didn't do is I did not leave the image box enabled. So let's go ahead and do that. So if we go here, properties, and we need to set the image box to enabled. There we go. And let's go ahead and run it. And there we go. And okay, forgot to change the font here. So we're going to set the font for the text box to 12. And then courier new. And okay, and that should be all the settings now finally. So let's go ahead and fire it up. And there we go. So as we're moving around, and I'm not sure how well this shows on screen, I have um, the recording set to be at 30 frames per second, but uh, at least I can see doing this live, and if, if you implement this um, yourself on your computer, you'll be able to see it firsthand. The blue X, which is the predicted um, position, is always slightly ahead, at least while we're moving, of the white X, which is the actual position. So our prediction algorithm is working pretty well visually, we can see on the top. Now, if we'd like a better testing of that, what we can, what we can do is we can swipe from more or less from the top left to the lower right, kind of at a moderately quick speed, so about something like that. And now if we look for some positions here, so let's look through our list. So, for example, for each of these, we have the current position, and then we have the next predicted position, and then and so on all the way down. So if we'd like to see how good our prediction is, we can compare the next predicted position with what the next position actually turned out to be, and then look at the differences. So here we have the X position is only different by two, and the Y position is dead on. And so that's an excellent result. And here the X position is a little bit different, but still not that much, and the Y position is only off by three. And then here the X position is uh, only off by nine, and the Y position is only off by two, and so on. So our prediction algorithm we'll find works pretty well. And so let's go ahead and take a look at that, uh, as well as the rest of the code. So. Uh, what we're doing here in the mouse move event is we're getting the current mouse position, uh, reading it into this global variable here, current mouse position, uh, with this statement here. And then we're going to add that to our list of mouse positions. And then we're going to calculate our predicted mouse positions by calling predicted next position, which is this function down here. We'll get to that in a moment. And then we simply update the uh, text box with the text that you saw a moment ago. And then we're going to declare a blank image, and then we're going to draw our um, white and blue for actual and predicted location crosses on it. And then we simply update the image box on the form and call do events to uh, give control back to the operating system for a moment to redraw the window. So the only other function in here other than the predict function is the draw a cross, and there we simply draw two lines crossing each other in whichever color is passed into the function. That's pretty straightforward, so let's take a look at the prediction function. So here's what we're going to do to predict the next position. If um, there's only one position so far, we can't really predict much, so we just have to return what that position is as the prediction as well. Um, as we go from 2, 3, and 4, and then to 5 or more positions, what we're going to do is we're going to do a weighted average. So for example, suppose number of positions was 10. So here we would have 10 minus 1 would be 9, and then here we would have 10 minus 2 would be 8. So in other words, we're doing the difference in x uh, value between the ninth position and the eighth position, the difference between the eighth position and the seventh position, seventh and sixth, and so on. And we're waiting the most recent position times 4, then second most recent times 3, then, then times 2 and times 1. And so at the end, we're going to take the sum of the changes that we got here, and we're going to divide it by 10 because of the way we're weighting it here with the 4, 3, 2, and 1 sums to 10. So that's going to give us this delta x weighted average of the change in position. Now, this is a pretty basic prediction algorithm, but as you see, it worked out pretty well for us. And then we're going to do the same thing with the y position. And then at that point, we're going to have our predicted x and y position, and that's simply then a matter of updating this global variable predicted position and rather returning predicted position. And at that point, um, that completes the program. So um, what we're going to do here, um, or I should say in the next video, is we're going to uh, leverage these first three programs that we did, and we're going to sort of put those together, and we're going to get this multiple object tracking by image subtraction program. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and end this video recording and jump right into the next video. See everybody in the next one.